Welcome back to Second John, which I believe is the 40th lesson. 13 verses, one chapter. And yes, we've gone along in no rush to learn what the Word of God has for us. Again, from the very beginning, we're working from the newborn babe to the age. Learning. Reminder. We're on verse number 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, worked, but that we receive a full reward. And from that we've gone into the study. Get the previous audios and videos of the judgment seat of Christ. And we learn that a Christian can lose rewards, not his soul, not salvation, but he can lose rewards and crowns and inheritance that he has obtained for the service to the Lord. And why should we receive a reward from God and turn around and lose it all for sin? Christian, you need to realize in your life that once you set out and put the armor on. You've got to know what the armor is. You've got to know how to wear the armor. you got to realize that it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a battle. That's what you got to know. And you got to hang in there. And Satan's going to attack, he's going to attack, he's going to attack with darts, he's going to attack with arrows, he's going to attack with ammunition, he's going to attack with bombs, he's going to attack with missiles, he's going to attack with canisters, he's going to attack with gas, he's going to attack! But you've got to survive unto the rapture or to death. Not for salvation, but for crowns. Now, we've looked at the crown of glory. That crown is for missionaries, pastors, evangelists. Not everybody will get that crown. But if you do service to the Lord in the ministry. Number two, we looked at the crown of rejoicing. And those are for souls that have been won for the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three. One we're talking about now. The incorruptible. The incorruptible. You buy a car. Eventually it will rust, decay, break down, fall apart. Leave it parked in your yard and mice will make a home of it. Birds will make a home of it. The squirrels will make a And it will be faded. It won't be that color that was in the showroom one day. The windows will break. The tires will... The gas will turn to water, if not evaporate. The parts will disintegrate. And you'll go to start it and it won't run anymore. Bees will make hives. You build a house, nice, lovely house, and as it's vacancy over months and years, the, sh the shingles on the on the roof don't hold the water; and it begins to leak. Windows break. The stairs start to decay. Animals will come living. The paint and plaster will fall off the wall. You know, it's amazing. I come from New England, and there's places in Connecticut, I, re I remember that you go down the road, and here's this old, old barn, and it's leaning. And you don't know what's holding that thing up. But that barn was brand new one day. But it corrupted. But here we have an incorruptible crown. What is that? It never, never will get dross. 
It will never need to be clean. It will be as shiny and new as the day it has been given to you. It won't get mold. It won't get cankered. It won't decay. It will be as the day the Lord Jesus Christ puts it on your head. You take that crown and you look at it, and you think it would be the day that you got it. This crown, finishing the Christian walk. I don't think Demas will get this crown. I know Paul will. I know John will. Peter, James, John. I know Christians who wore in this crown. We read that we receive a full reward in 1 John 1 8. If you quit, if you stop and go back to the world, you have not lost your salvation, but you have lost this crown. If you are a backslidden Christian that never gets back on the path that God has directed to you, which you have changed, you keep walking away in rebellion against God, you'll not get this crap. You'll lose it. This is the finishing line crown. This is the gold, the silver, and the bronze. This is the, the blue ribbon. This is the trophy of all trophy. To say, I have finished my Christian walk. What God has given to me upon death or rapture, I have finished the walk. I may have wanted to quit. I may have laid down, sat down, or felt discouraged. But upon my last breath was to God's service, doing what God wanted me to do. Here the crown, even as a sinner. God has laid out before you. A will for your life that's unlike anybody else's life. Go you all the world and preach the gospel. There are people who are doing that in their neighborhood or a nursing home or a jail or a beach or in the middle of a desert or another country, another state, but they're all going. We are all sinners, saved. Yet but the sins in my life are not yours. Satan may come up to you with a beer and have you drool or one. That, that doesn't appeal to me. And yet what appeals to me, you may know nothing about. And we may fall to sin several times in our life, and we will. Yeah, if I stay faithful to God, if I stay true to God, to my dying day, or the rapture. Now that path may be changed many times in my life. My life. I may do things in my life that God says, okay, you can't do that no more. I gotta redirect another path for your life. Because of your sin, because of what you've done. 
Israel was supposed to go right to the promised land. Spent 40 years wandering around. <coughs> Excuse me. Your motive and your thoughts being on the Lord Jesus Christ for this crown. Your reactions to your sin. Based upon Jesus Christ. There may be times, no, 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 to that sin. No! That one yes. Oh, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, 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 no. Oh, Lord. Is Jesus Christ the only thing? The only one? You want right now. If that little genie bottle came up to you. I'll make American genie bottle. Oh, three times. I'll give you three wishes. You say, Stolly, the genie came to you right now and said, You have three wishes. What will you wish? We're out of here. We're gone. Hey, but don't you have lost family members? Yeah, but I witnessed to them. Oh, well, what about money? If I call for the rapture right now, based upon my three wishes, I wouldn't need to worry about money no more. Hell, I'm gonna get a new body if I if I ask the Lord to give us rapture right now. The Lord Jesus Christ coming for me will be the answer for all. There will be nothing else I would want. Demas, I said, lost this crown. You ever get it back? It's never recorded. The last thing we read about Demas, he went back to the world. And he lost. How simple is this crown? How simple is it to lose this crown? You see these two things you got here on your face? You just got to be focused on Jesus Christ. These two things on the side of your head? They gotta be eternal to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. My life verse is looking for the, the blessed hope and the glorious period of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What do I get? I get an incorruptible crown. You may be sitting out there right now as a born again Bible believing Christian and you want other things to you want that trip. You want that position. You want that that horse, that car, that 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 person, that team, whatever. This crown is based upon the want in your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. And in life, there's going to be pain and sorrow and suffering. For all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but you can't quit. It's hard. The pain. Is it worth giving up the incorruptible crown? Is it worth it? See, if you take your eyes off the rewards, 
earth and worldly and Satan will seem so more glorious. And we're talking about Second John. Whoopie do do do. And in Second John, we're talking about a crown that you could lose. And you thought, oh, we're going to get the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons knocking on the door. What about losing rewards? Before we get to the cults coming to the door. As your brother in Christ, I don't want you to lose. I want you to receive a full reward. I want you to go for it. And like I said, from babe to elder, you may never have heard of this. You may never get this kind of teaching from your church. You may get love pansies and lilies. Many too many Christians, because of the church they sit under, don't even know this stuff. And they're so important. Because these crowns are for eternal that will never end. Don't lose this crown like Demas did. Are you going to be faithful to death or rapture? Set your goal now. And pray about it. Lord, as this day of age that I am right now, this wicked, vile body and heart that is just wants to do wrong and in the flesh, I want to cross the finish line with you there. Well done, thou good and faithful. I want that. Lord, help me to get there. And when you stumble, get on your knees before you get up, repent, and get right. Then get back and get walking again. And in this race, you're going to stumble. You're not going to stay on your feet all the time. You are going to stumble. You're going to fall. What are you going to do? Lay down, give up, then you lost the crown. You know, you could fall in this life, all right? You fell, sin. You're running, you fell. You get on your knees, you repent, and at that point, the rapture, your death happens, you're faithful. You haven't reached that, you've reached the finish line. Because you wanted to do right. And you wanted to get back. And you wanted to walk. Whether you're on your knees in the, in the path. Or you're there at the finish line. When that finish line comes up. If you are still walking. Trying for the Lord. Crawling. For the Lord. With the Lord Jesus Christ. As your motivation. As your target. There's the crown. Wear a crown. Wear a crown. Wear a bright and shiny crown. Do you want a crown? Do you want the Lord pleased with you? Don't turn to the world. Don't go back. It's not worth it. Not worth it. And you'll know, on your path, on your knees, may be your finish line. Even if you fell to sin, if that's your finish line God has set for you, and you fall in the Lord, still on the Lord, and sorry. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. Where am I? 
I'm in glory. Waiting for a crown. Oh, Lord, you know what? You're not worth it. Heaven ain't worth it. I'm going back. I'm going to turn around. And I ain't going to look back. But I'm going to go backwards. You lost the crown. I don't want to go to church anymore. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to pray. I'm going to go marry that woman. I'm going to go back to that place. I'm going to go back to that career. You lost the crown. Now, before we close out, let's look at some scripture about this crown. Let's see what the Bible has to say. You still care what the Bible says? If you're listening, you still do. You must be. Amen. Stick to it. First Corinthians nine. First Corinthians nine. First Corinthians nine twenty four. First Corinthians nine twenty four. And we read Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. And when you get a marathon like that, I guarantee everyone that starts off, not everybody gets to the finish line. Not everyone who starts off at the racetrack ends up at the checkered flag. Some crash. Some break down. Some start with the object to finish and never do. But one receiveth the prize. Most running, athletic, racing, in that realm of, of, of competition with each other, there is a prize, whether it be money, whether it be a, 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 a ribbon, whether it be a trophy or a medal, a certificate. That is why you join that particular field. You are doing that race for that, whatever it is at the end. So one that ye may obtain. Run to the incorruptible crown. Run to it. As that guy will drive left hand turns for three hours to get whatever the tro whatever the money, whatever it is. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Listen. You're going to stay in good health. You're going to exercise. What do you do for a Christian? An athlete will lift weights, eat proper, sleep proper, be awake proper. What is the temper of, of the Christian? You're in the book. You're praying. You're in a Bible-believing church. You're out there. Going, you're witnessing to people. You're supporting the church, the missionaries. We don't have time to get along in that, but that, that's a whole other study there. As much as, it, as a guy will practice and, and work out and do that field that he's in, the practice. You know, when you see the guys go out in the baseball field and they're on the TV, that's just part of their life. You don't see, you know, the five million times they throw that ball. 
one day. And the five billion times they catch the ball. And then stretching and, the, you know, the running around the laps. You don't see that part. Christians don't see you home reading your Bible and studying your Bible. They don't see you on your knees. They don't see you in battle with Satan. They're, no, I don't want that. Oh, but when you go to church, there's you know there's the lights, there's the time. That's only three times a week compared to seven days that God has given you to live. Three hours of, of, of a message, make three and a half, three, four hours, let's say, for the singing and the message. Compared to full twenty four hours that you have. Now they do it to attain a corruptible crown, a blue ribbon, a trophy, a reward, a piece of paper. Listen, the gold, silver, and bronze of the Olympics is a corruptible crown. They corrupt. They'll go, they get lost, they get stolen, they get sold at the pawn shop. There, there's one team there where they put the name on, on the trophy, and then next year the next team that wins gets the trophy with their name. They don't even get to keep the trophy. And you'll get rings and stuff like that. They'll go. You'll divorce that woman. She'll take the rings and, and pawn it. But we Christians and incorruptible. There it is. Why? How? By running the race. By doing and finishing what God wants us to do and what God wants us to finish. How many Christians will watch a bunch of men driving around in a circle or a bunch of horses going around in a half circle or a bunch of guys chasing after a, a pigskin and who and hurrah all the way to the end to the winning team but yet they won't be a winning team in Christ. They don't finish. But oh, they watch those that did finish. What would you think that you're there? You got this great big football game, all football games. Whether it be college, professional, whatever it is. Maybe your son's playing in high school. What is that football game? There it is. You're in the third quarter. The ball is in the quarterback, and they're going. He's about to throw. They blow the whistle. Game over. Wait a minute. It's not over. you got another quarter. Yeah, but Christian, you've got another quarter yourself and you give up and you stop and you don't throw the ball. You would get upset because the game was called, but you won't get upset because you called the game on God. Now, there was... I forget what it was, but let me tell the illustration. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I apologize. But there was a baseball game, I think. One of the big ones. I don't know. Something like that. Maybe you know better. And there was an earthquake or something. And they broke the game. Breaking news. And the fans went ballistic. They broke the game for breaking news. And you don't get upset because you've broken your walk with the Lord by something stupid. I, Paul, therefore, so run. Not as uncertainly. I don't know, you know, I don't know if I'm going to win this race. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. You don't know who's going to win in the worldly race. Someone may cheat to get that, that reward. You may fall down and break your leg. You may have a heart attack and die. So fight I. Fight! Armor! Not as one that beateth the air. 
you know, shadow boxing. You mean, when you're shadow boxing, you know, you you What's that? What is that? Who's going to win? <laughs> what happened to him? He was shadow boxing. Well, what's he doing on the floor? His shadow beat him. What? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a joke? His shadow knocked him out. So you can't just throw fists. You can't just, okay, I'm running. Where are you going? Well, I don't know. Why are you studying the Bible? I don't know. Why are you praying? I don't know. <laughs> Why are you reading your Bible? The Bible says study to show thyself approved under God. I want God to be approved by uh, in my life. I want God to, to show me things. I want God to use me by his word. I want to please God. Oh, okay. Why do you pray? Bible says pray without ceasing. Comfort those that need comfort. Rejoice with them to rejoice. Weep with them and rejoice. Okay. There you go. Run. Jesus told about heaven. Jesus told about hell. Jesus prayed. I'm to be like Jesus. That's the runway I'm going to do. Bring, but, excuse me, but I keep under my body. And bring it into subjection. No, you can't have that. That's not healthy, Christian. No. Can't do that. Can't spend my life in a bar. Can't spend my life smoking. Can't spend my life in sin. That is wrong. That is not what God wants me. So you got to know what the Bible says. You got to know what the Bible tells you to do and what God expects from you. Oh, I don't know what the will of God is in my life. Then you haven't studied the Bible. Because the Bible tells you what the will of man is. I said, set your mark for the Lord Jesus Christ. How can you set your eyes on Jesus Christ if you don't even know who he is and what he wants? So you gotta have a purpose. You gotta know what these crowns are. And you know if you if, if you're in the church and you're just doing what God wants you to do and you're not called to the ministry, you know that you're not going to get the crown of glory, but you can pray for your pastor to get his and obtain it. That he don't lose the incorruptible crown. Because if your pastor lose get loses an incorruptible crown and gives up, he's not going to get the crown of, crown of glory. You gotta realize if you lose one crown, you may lose them all. If you are a pastor or evangelist or a Sunday school teacher and you got the crown of glory and you don't finish this race, you lost the incorruptible crown and you lost the crown of glory for giving up on the ministry. And you may not be winning souls for Jesus, there goes the crown of rejoicing. Giving up, quitting the race, going to sit down on the sideline, going back to your sin, turning and fighting against all the other Christians that are running the right direction, causes you rewards. And Paul says to earn the full reward. Don't lose it. Now what else we have? Hebrews 12.1 That's a lot. Hebrews 12.1 I apologize. My page is stick. Alright. Hebrews 12.1 Wherefore, Right after Hebrews 11, the, 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 the faith chapter, all these people that are mentioned in Hebrews 11. Wherefore, seeing we, hey, that's me. Paul said, that's me. That's you. Also, our compass circled about with so great a cloud of witnesses.
There's many people watching you right now. In glory. Who? I don't know, but they're witnesses. Who have, who have gone on before us. Have, have finished the race before us. Who have gone on to glory before us. And there are people right now watching you. And seeing will you finish. There are some out there who want you to quit. And will lavish in the joyfulness of gratefulness of you going back to your sin. So they can say, I told you so. Your unsaved co-workers don't want you to finish the race. Your unsaved family don't want you to end up with, with a crown of glory. Uh, excuse me, an incorruptible crown. There are people in your church who don't want you to succeed because they'll make them look bad. Let us lay aside every weight. You're going to run. You don't put you don't put waiters on. You don't add things. You don't carry things in your pocket. You don't carry cigarettes. You don't carry booze. And the sin which does so easily beset us, that means you've got to fight that sin in your life that is bothering you. You've got to say no to that sin. And you know what that sin is in your life. That is part of run in the race of your life. To say no to that sin. He's making a list and checking it twice to see who's been naughty or nice. Lap 37, mile 28. That said, he said no. Lap 47, mile 42. He said yes, fell down. But boy, he got on his knees and got right back up. Oh man, that mile marker 27. But we're going to lose him there for a minute. I didn't think he was going to get back up. And let us run with patience. I hate that word. <laughs> get me in a red light. I'll show you what patience is not. That's my sin. That is my sin. One of them. Why give up crowns and glory before the Lord Jesus Christ? Because I can't wait. It's stupid. I'm going to lose it all because of a red light. Lord, I'm going back because I don't want to stop at red lights no more. Let us run the, with patience the race that is set before us. I don't know when my, my, my race is over. It may be this afternoon. I'm 40-something years old, 46, something like that. I may have another 40 more years of pain. Man, I'm sore. My shoulders hurt. My teeth are rotting. I've got a serious family situation going on right now in my life. I'm not looking forward to 40 more years, but it may. I'm the run that race in the Lord is just as much as I was happy with the Lord, glory, and top of the mountain, even in the valley. When my legs are kinking up in their calves and I got jolly horses all over my legs, oh. If I got 40 more years, I better be 40 more years of more experience, of more love for the Lord, and more want to do with the race than I am today. But 
when that finish line comes up, whether it be death or rapture, is my eye, my ear, my heart set on the Lord. Looking unto Jesus. There you go. I see that checkered flag. No, no. I see Jesus. I see the banner says finish. No. See Jesus. You see Jesus, and that will be the line that you have to reach. When you see finish, you see the checkered flag, or you see sin, that's not the end you're supposed to be running to. Looking unto Jesus. We're not going to finish this. The author and finisher of our faith. So it better be the Jesus of the Bible. It better not be the Mormon Jesus. It better not be the Jehovah Jesus. It better not be the Catholic Jesus. It better be the Jesus of the Bible. Paul says there's other Jesuses out there. Who for joy that was set before him endured the cross. So he's got to be the gospel. That Christ died for your sin. Was buried according to the scriptures. And arose again the third day. So we have a race in Corinthians. Other people have races. Everybody has races. And there are all kinds of rewards. But there is one biblical reward and in Hebrews we're all running but I gotta take off the weight I've got to take off the sin as a Christian and I've got to set my eyes to Jesus the proper Jesus I apologize for that. If your eyes are not set upon Jesus, you will walk off to other things. You will run in other directions. Demas' eyes were not upon Jesus. I want to hurry up because we got two more verses here. Second Timothy. Second Timothy four seven. I want you to go back and read this whole chapter. This chapter is Paul's final words before he goes off to glory. But Paul says, I have fought a good fight. You're going to fight a fight. Why, God gave you armor. The Christian walk is not the walk of easiness. Get that. Know that. It's a fight. It's a struggle. You have an enemy called Satan, and he does not want you to please God, and God, he does not want God to be pleased with you. If somebody told you that the Christian life was going to be simple and all that, you need to slap him in the face with a telephone pole. I'm telling you right now, the true Christian walk, I'm warning you, is a fight. And it may be a fight to death or rapture. There are Christians that are in wheelchairs. There are Christians that are living with pain. There are Christians that are living with disease. There are Christians living with heartache. And they haven't given up. I have fought the good fight. Let that be on your tombstone in heaven. Let that be upon your lips when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. Say, Lord, I have fought the good fight. And let the Lord Jesus Christ say, Amen. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. We talked about that. No, well, that's coming up. 
we'll, we'll stop right there. That crown will come up the last one. So we're going to start right there. So there's another crown you can get. But we're looking at the incorruptible crown. I have finished my course. I have set my eyes to Jesus. And I have reached Jesus. I failed. I fell. And I stumbled and broke my leg and twisted my ankle. But I got to Jesus. You know, even a war, you can get through the war and get to the peacetime and all that, and you've been battered and got bullet holes all over you, been been to the hospital several times, and but you make it to the peace. But then again, you, you may know people in the war who who've died in the battle. Were they holding their gun? No Christian should get a butt wound. You know how you get a butt wound in, in military, in war? It's when you turn around and go the opposite direction. That's the only way you get a butt wound. Unless somebody behind you shot you. Now for Christians, they'll shoot you in the back. But don't you get that million dollar butt wound. Because when you go home, hey, where would you get injured? Well, I got injured in the hiney. You gotta explain yourself. Well, I got injured in the arm. I got injured right here in my chest, and, and I got injured in my thigh. And, and why? Well, all right, purple heart. Where, where'd you get injured? I got injured in the butt. How'd you get injured in the butt? I went the wrong direction. Revelation three eleven. This cross, I mean, this crown, you got to take a beating. I can't get up and just run, go run a race. There's no way. I know people who run. And they run every single day. And they clock how far they run, how long they run, and distance and everything. And they're dire. And they gotta say no to their to their body. They gotta say no to things in their life. Why can't we do that as Christians? In order to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, you gotta say no to a lot of things. Revelation three eleven. Behold, I come quickly. Oh, Lord, it don't look quickly. Don't take your eyes off me. He's coming. Hold that fast. That don't mean, uh, that means, grip. Hold on. Don't let go. Endure. Which thou hast. That no man no man take thy crown you can lose it that's two places we've seen in the Bible that where you can lose your body may make you lose this crown I don't want to do it no more I'm tired I'm sore I'm beat oh man no 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 not another inch no Oh, not another birthday. Oh, come on. Oh, one more dollar. No, one more prescription. No. Oh. And then you may have people who come up to you. Why don't you just quit? Here. Come party with us. Oh, come on. You, you, you can do it one night. Come on, let down your guard. Come on. Then Satan may come up to you and say, hey, just quit. Give it up. It ain't worth it. Is that Bible really true? You say, does Satan really do that? I have read my Bible and, and, and gone through it and had Satan come up. You just see what you read? Yeah. You really believe that? And I've gone off and thinking, well, yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, almost got me there. <laughs> 
I had read passages in the Bible that say, and then said, oh, I could have fallen away. Yeah, well, that, that, that doesn't sound real. I could have fallen away and lost the crown because of reading the Bible. Satan. Been enticed by someone. Oh, oh. <laughs> Man, I just don't want to do it. I'm tired. No reason to lose a crown. An incorruptible crown. Most people that you watch on the TV or here on the radio, they get those crowns offered to them. Yeah, I want to buy them. I wonder where they'll be standing before Jesus. 500 laps. 30 times he got the ball in the hoop. 100 yards. 36 RBI. 12 marathon. Will they hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, in the everlasting fire? We can't take trophies, ribbons, and medals into hell. You can't take that stuff with you into glory. It burns up. These crowns here that we're talking about, number three of five of them. Lesson 38, lesson 39, and 40, I believe this one is. 41, 42 to come, Lord willing. These are the ribbons. These are the rewards. These are the ones for all eternity. These are the ones that the Lord Jesus Christ will put upon your head. Those nail-pierced hands. Takes the crown. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And those, nail, those hands that were nailed to the cross and placed them upon your head. Imagine God, your Savior, who died for you, saying, Thank you for being faithful. Thank you. That's a lot better than some stupid ring. That's so much better than having you in the newspaper. Newspaper dies out. Newspaper industry is dying. That might dying out. March 9th, 2014. Tell me who were the big names in the, in the sports page. No, don't go look. Right now, tell me. March 9th, 2014. Exactly one year ago. Tell me what names were in the sports page. Come on, tell me. And where do you think those rewards are today? They may be on a wall, yeah. They may be someone's trophy case. But imagine all in glory walking around New Jerusalem. Hey. You remember when the Lord put that on, on your head? He put mine on my head. Remember that? Shall we gather at the river? Wear a crown. Wear a crown. Wear a bright and shiny crown. When the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. Can you sing that if, if you haven't finished the race? I didn't wear a crown, I didn't wear a crown, when the battle was over, I couldn't have been found. You don't get rewards for absent without leave. You don't get rewards for deserting your pope. You don't get rewards for mission and action. It doesn't happen. You get a crown for finishing the race. Paul finished. Luke finished. John finished. James finished. Peter finished. Except for John. The eleven apostles died violent death. John was put into boil in oil or water. I forget which one it was. And he's still finished. 
And Demas is recorded as not finishing. If you don't finish, you will be recorded. You will stand before your family. You will stand before your church. You will stand before your friends in Christ. Your family in Christ. You will stand before all the missionaries in Christ. And you'll stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Put your name. Went back to Thessalonica. That's your reward. That's your crown. Or do you want a crown of rejoicing? An incorruptible crown. And Lord willing, a crown of life and a crown of righteousness yet to follow in this study. It's your choice. You say, Brother Hayward, I want them crowns. I want to be pleasing in the Lord. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Look unto Jesus Christ. Corinthians, run that race. Timothy, don't give it up. Finish. Revelation, don't let no one take it from you. John, 2 John, don't leave. See, the Holy Spirit warns us. Why would he warn us about losing the reward if we could keep them? Because there's a possibility. The assurance. You can do things in your life and lose the full reward. Keep fighting. Keep going. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And I could sing that hymn without destroying it. I sing that hymn. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. 